If you're in the market to work with CSS frameworks, but don't really know what to use, how to set it up or anything like that, this video is going to be perfect for you because we're going to go through three simple steps. The first step, what is a CSS framework? The second step is how we can create a CSS framework inside Bricks. And the third and final step is how we can start to utilize this inside our designs. So first of all, what exactly is a CSS framework? Well, CSS Framework is a pre-prepared library of CSS code that provides a set of predefined styles, components, and often layout options designed to help developers like you and me to create websites or web applications faster and more consistently. These frameworks provide a foundation for styling, so you don't need to start from scratch every time you begin a project. CSS frameworks help ensure a cohesive design by offering a standard set of styling rules for common elements like buttons, forms, grids, and typography. Now, if you're getting started using a CSS framework or implementing this into your design process, some of the commercial ones can be a little overwhelming. So creating something yourself from scratch is actually relatively simple and gives you the ability to name things the way that you want so they're a lot easier to understand and also to start off with a pretty stripped back and simple set of options that you can expand as you move forward and become more confident. The other cool thing is the fact that there's so many options online these days to handle the generation of things like typography scales, spacing, color palettes, and so on. So you don't need to go that boring time and effort of handwriting every single thing. So let's take a look at a couple of options and see how easy it is to start implementing these. So let's start off with probably the most important aspect of building a design, and that's your typography, the scaling and so on. So we've got the fluid type scale calculator. Sounds cool. And if you take a look, this will give you on the left hand side the ability to customize various different aspects like the size of your fonts, the actual scale ratio you want to use and so on. I'm not going to do too much detail about this. We'll keep it pretty simple and straightforward just so you can kind of find your feet. You also see we've got the minimum for mobile, the maximum for desktop, the type scale, the variable prefix, the rounding and so on. And then you'll notice on the right hand side, we've got all the actual code that's been output. Now these are CSS variables. And if you want to find out more about CSS variables with working with Bricks Builder, you can check out this video. It goes into a lot more detail than I'm going to cover in this video. Okay, so let's take a look at how we can customize this to get exactly what we want. First of all, you've got the minimum for your mobile and the maximum for your desktop. So this is going to give you a base font size in pixels. So we'll leave that as it is, unless, of course, you're working with a very small font. You may want to increase that, but 16 should be more than enough. Then we can set the screen width in pixels and the type scale ratio. Now, there's multiple different kind of type scale ratios. This is using the major third, which is probably the most common. So for this, we'll leave it as it is. And what this is basically doing, this is what's being used to calculate the different jumps between each of the font sizes. So 1.25 is perfectly fine on mobile. Then moving up to the desktop, you can see the base font size there is 19. The screen width is 1280, which we're going to change this to 1366, which is the value that I generally tend to use. And you can see you've got the type scale ratio there. Then underneath, you've got the type scale, and this is the all steps. So you can see you've got your small, your base, your medium, large, and so on, which again is being reflected in the variable names, small, medium, large, etc. You can change this if you want to very easily. Put what you want in there. So for example, we might actually be using extra small, XS, we might change base to small and MD. We could change that to base or medium, whatever you want. I tend to find medium is the kind of main one that I use, but you can set that to what you want. Then your base steps, you can see you can check, say on here, which is your base, we'll set that to be medium. So now this is kind of the starting point. You can see this is one rem, which is basically that 16 or the 19. Then everything scales up or down based upon the actual scale ratio that's being used there. If you want to change the variable prefix, so we've got FS there, let's just say we change this to WPT for WP Tuts. You can see that changes on there, so we can customize this. And then the rounding is just how it rounds up or down based upon if there's fractional values. You can use other options here if you want to then, but we're going to leave everything as it is. And you can see you've got the rem value pixels. Now this depends upon whether you're setting bricks up to work with 10 pixels as one rem or 16 pixels as one rem. Now by default, it's using the 62.5%, which is 10. So we'll change this over to 10, just so we make sure we've got the consistency between what we're doing in bricks and what we're doing inside here. So now if we take a look underneath, we've got a type scale preview. So we can see there's our medium, that's the size of the text. You can then adjust your screen size and you'll see how this will grow or shrink depending upon the actual resolution. 
So we go up to 1366, which is the maximum. This is the size that we'll see the text. If we go right the way down to the bottom, which is what we'll see on a mobile or smaller, this is what you'll see. So you see how this just scales nicely. So now what we need to do is copy this. Now we've set our type scale up. We can head over into bricks. So once we're in bricks, the first thing we need to do is go and set some values up. So to do that, we're going to come into our classes and variables option, the top left. And inside there, this is where we can handle our classes and our variables. In this example, everything we're doing is with variables. So at the moment, you see nothing is inside here. So let's make our life a little easier. Let's organize this. So we'll just set this up. So we'll create a new category called WPTUTS Typography and create that. So now we're going to put all our typography settings into that particular folder. Just makes organizing a little easier. So now we're going to come up to the import option. And from there, we're simply going to just paste in those values you just copied and say import CSS variables. And there's our seven variables imported. We'll close this. Now you can see they've been imported with all the values we've just taken. Unfortunately, they're not organized yet. So all we need to do is select all of these, choose the categorize option. And from there, we're going to say pop those into the WB test typography and click update. So now we've organized those. Cool. Now let's just do something the same. Let's just do WP Tuts. We'll call this spacing and we'll hit create. Now let's head into our online generator. So now we can see we've got the online generator for handling spacing. Again, it uses the same kind of setup. You can see you've got these double bat dashes for our variables, then the name, and then again, it's using clamp and so on. So all this is nice and fluid and flexible. So it'll scale smoothly without the sort of jumps as you go between the different screen sizes, which is not very nice to look at. First of all, you can see we're using clamp, but you can also use CSS locks. However, clamp is what we want to work with. Then we've got units and we've got rems and pixels. So you can see this using clamp again. So we've got rem values inside here, and then you've got relative to viewport or the container. So we're going to leave this set to viewport and everything else is fine. If you want to change the prefix, you can do so you can see space is set up on there. That's perfectly fine. I quite like that. If you want to include comments, you can do. But for this example, we don't want any of that. And all we want to do is copy this little block of code. We don't want anything else. We don't want this one pairs or the root or anything. We simply want to copy this back into our variable manager and import, paste those values in, import those CSS variables, click close. And what we're going to do is we're going to select all of these, categorize, pop those into our spacing, hit update. So now our spacing is all organized. Okay, so next up, we want to take a look at creating some colors. So one of the easiest way to do this is to use an online color generator. I've got one here, again, link in the description down below. And this gives us our color palette. We can set our base color from whatever we want. So let's choose something like this green color. And you see this will give us shades from white through to black and all the shades in between of that particular color. If there's too many or not enough shades, you can adjust the value here to get more or less of those colors. And then if we take a look underneath, you can see there's all of our CSS variables. So what we need to do is simply copy what we need, which is just the variables. We don't want this section at the bottom, this example. We're going to copy it, head back into bricks. And from there, we're going to simply go into import, paste that value inside, import our CSS variables, hit save, close this down. Now we're going to choose our colors. And from there, we're going to categorize these and set those in our colors. Hit update and save. Now everything is nicely organized for us. So we can close this down. And now we're ready to move on to step three, which is how we can start to utilize these inside our designs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply create a simple structure. So a section and a container. And inside the container, we're going to add three different elements. So first of all, let's add an image. We'll add a heading. And finally, we'll add some text. OK, so there's our basics all set up. Let's add a little bit of content in now so we can see what we're working with. So now we've got some content in, let's start using these variables. So first of all, let's select our container and I want to change the spacing in between our three different elements. So with the container selected, we'll come over to our row gap and you've got two ways in which you can work here. You can click inside row gap and start typing VAR, for example, and you can see there's all your variables. You can then, if you want to, search. Then if you want to, you can search inside the top little search section or you can click on the little three variable symbol and they'll show you all your variables. This will also show you how they group together. So you can see there's our typography, our spacing, and our colors. So let's go into the spacing setting and set this to be small. 
and you see that now adjusts the spacing. Want to change it? Let's just do XS for extra small to close that gap up a little bit. You can see now we've customized that gap. Next up, let's select our text itself. Come out to our styles. And inside there, we're going to type typography. Again, click the variable option. And from there, we can choose our typography setting. So let's say you want to set this to be XL. Bang, it's now XL. Simple as that. Want to change your color? Click on the color option. Again, what we can do is we can come down, we can choose raw. You can start typing in VAR if you want to. And again, all your variables are there. But let's make our life a little easier. Let's click on the little variables icon. And from there, we can go through to our colors. And we'll choose one of our colors. And you see that now updates the color in real time. Pretty simple. Same thing goes with our text. If we come back into our main text, again, we can click our little symbol, come to our typography, and we'll say we'll set this to be medium. Bang, you can see that's set things up there. And you can carry on doing this as much as you want to. Hit save, and we've applied that now. And again, like I say, because this is fluid, it's going to shrink and grow as needed as our design grows. But we're not limited to just using them inside here. We could combine these if we wanted to with global classes, so we can set our styles up, apply it to a global class, then we can reuse that with all those available inside there, all the variables. And we can also use it if we come in to our settings section into theme styles. Let's create a new theme style. We'll give it a name. We'll call it sample. Click create. So now we've got all the different things we can set up inside here. So let's say we want to have the same spacing applied to every single section or container we create. But what we can do is we can come down to, for example, the section. And inside there, we can come into our options for our padding. And we're going to set some padding top and bottom. So we'll click to link those together. You'll see all our variable options are in available inside here as well. So let's click on there. And let's say we want to put large. So now whenever we insert a new section, it will automatically have that value applied. And if we go into our variables at any point and make changes to that spacing, they will reflect everywhere that's used. What we're doing is we're kind of giving ourselves a centralized location to be able to set everything up. But as you can see, this is just the very, very basics. You can go so much farther than this. You can put your spacing in for your gaps, for your line heights, for everything you want to, and create as simple or as comprehensive a set of values. Manage them in whatever way you want, and then use them where you want throughout your design. But this is just scratching the surface of what you could do creating your own CSS framework inside Bricks using online tools to be able to set the basics up for you without having to go in and do all of this manually. Hopefully you found this useful. And if you want to learn more about working with bricks and some of the things you can do, check out this playlist next. As always, all applicable links are down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. Until next time, take care.